Hello and welcome to 901 Speed Kings. As requested by some viewers, I'm going to be giving my review on the 2020 Yamaha R1. So let's get it started. <laughs> So first, I got this bike on Black Friday 2019, and I put just over a thousand miles on it. The R1 looks amazing. I really love the styling. It definitely turns heads everywhere, and I think the aggressive styling makes it one of the best looking sport bikes ever. Second, this bike is fast, really fast. I know there's probably some other bikes out there a little faster, a little more top speed, but overall, this bike has great response, it's easy to drive out of corners, and has great pickup, and from 7 to 14,000 RPMs, it's a beast. Uh, in the past, I know people have said uh, the R1 has twitchy throttle. The 2020 is 100% drive by wire, and it feels excellent to me. Uh, as far as the engine... You know, the, the 2020 and up bikes are going to have to meet Euro 3. I think it's 3, whatever number they chose for that garbage. Uh, this called for more restrictive catalytic converters and some other stuff. So Yamaha had, to, Yamaha had to beef up the engine to make a little more power to hang with the new European bikes. They changed the cams. They put roller followers on there, which... It's an excellent idea, and they made some changes in the head too. The engine makes great power. I have not dined on this this bike yet, but it's coming. <clears throat> um, and it makes power pretty much any RPM, and it's pretty easy to cruise, and it's also easy to instantly put space between you and anyone else on the road. Uh, the bike is agile. It handles really well. Uh, this new R1 is pretty nimble. It's easy to ride any way you want to ride it. I, the suspension seems to work great. Uh, I did set the sag on this bike and set up the suspension for me and my style. And uh, have, I've had to make some tweaks here and there, which, of course, and I will continue to do so. But it, it works great. It's easy to adjust, and it's actually really nice. Uh, as far as things I probably don't like about this bike, uh, not a whole lot. But number one is this bike doesn't have a fuel gauge. I had a way, way, way cheaper MT-07, and it had a, had a gauge. But the uh, flagship R1 here is Superbike, and doesn't have one. And Yamaha, you need to fix that. Uh, the display on this bike is a super nice asset. It's, you know, it's backlit. It does different colors. It has street and track mode. I uh, just wish it had a gas gauge in it. And lastly, uh, the seat. The seat is really wide. I really feel that the shape of the seat near the tank needs to be a little bit smaller. Spread your legs and kind of leaves your twig and berries hanging out, if you know what I mean. Uh, only once have I had to smash my nads going over some bumps. But I think that uh, thinning that seat out, making it a little more narrow next to the, to the tank, would make it easier to grip with your legs. And, you know, it's not overly horrible, but it could certainly be better. So, there she is, it's my Yamaha R1 2020 model, got to take it out for a little spin, do some drives, gives you some feels about what it's like to be on this bike, and continue with my review. It's always a good feeling to throw my leg over this thing. You can see the TFT display, front brake, and show you the balance front and rear on the bike. Got the menu knob, I guess is a good word for that. Um, you can switch between odometer, your temps, and different things on the screen. And if you hold it down, it'll switch. 
to where all your menus are, display mode, street mode, track mode. Track mode's not very useful for the street, really. Then the YRC settings, that's going to be where all your modes are. <clears throat> Four modes, A, B, C, and D. Uh, a mode, I guess, is the track-oriented mode. But really, you can custom all of these to be whatever you want them to be. There's no set uh, design as to what they are. The areas that you see in the gray there, that's what the default settings are from Yamaha. And you can see my A mode. I got trash control turned way down. And I do have, well, I guess it's showing the lift control is, is off. That would explain some things. I just want to be a little bit of running and then, you know, practice some wheelies. And I switched it to trash gear or to the lift control where I had a little more lift control so I could keep the front tire on the ground. But I generally have my B mode lift controls on two, TCS two, slide controls on two. I had a little more electronics on it and I feel a little bit more confident riding on curvy roads with it. it doesn't make a huge well, about how much of a difference it makes but I don't really feel it but it makes me feel better anyway and you can select your mode right there you can adjust whatever you want on there go back out it tracks your lap times uh, maintenance intervals you can set your clock, the brightness, kilometers or miles. Wallpaper, you can select different modes for that. And if you're not, you can't be moving when you change a mode, but you can right here with this button up and down go through all your modes if you hit the center button you can go to power and you can change it if you want to reduce your power or you want to add trash control or take away clearly i don't want power two on there and i'm gonna go ahead and put it back in mode b all right so let's get it fired up the old familiar sound of the R1 engine. Twitchiness. <clears throat> um, you can see 14, 15, 13 mile an hour, 1500 RPMs maybe. She pulls along just fine. You can roll on it and it will ride out just fine as well. about this bike right here is the quick shift and the auto blipper. You got an indicator there. QS, the green arrow, that means I can shift up. If you roll off the gas, you get the down arrow letting you know that you can blip it back down a gear. So I really only use the clutch on this thing for taking off. that on my other bikes too but this thing you don't have to lift on the gas if you're in a pretty close race with somebody you guys do roll racing or whatever you're into and you're relatively the same speed when your next door neighbor changes gears uh, you're going to gain seconds on them as soon as he rolls off that gas you're going to see the bike nose down and your bike this hard one's just going to keep pulling it's pretty fun 
definitely handy and it makes some wicked sounds as well. on that light. <clears throat> it's kind of a gloomy day here in good old Tennessee. But not a bad day for riding, a little windy. about owning this bike is everything else in your life becomes boring. This thing is an absolute joy to ride. And you really don't ever want to get off of it. It's not the most comfortable bike, but I've kind of gotten used to it. I do get some tiredness, cramminess in my shoulders. I ride for a couple of hours, but I really ain't complaining about that. But it's just so much fun. It sounds so good, and it always seems like someone's in your way. I don't know how people drive so slow sometimes. At least that's what I think when I'm on on my bike. I gotta remind myself just to slow down and enjoy a solid 31 mile an hour. Not, they're not super intrusive really. And I think the uh, lift control is on too. And uh, in first and second gear it'll definitely come up. Uh, sometimes third depending on the road if it's a little hill. But if I'm on a straight road, I'm cool with it coming up. But I like a little bit more in the curves because if you're trying to really get off on a curb and the front tire comes up, you can't control your direction. So. See a little Corvette up there. Sound. Especially 
for the quick step, baby. Another friendly neighborhood biker. We were supposed to have rain all day today. It is quite gloomy, but no rain yet. So we go ahead and knock this little review out. Um, just so you guys can experience the way I normally ride. Inside the uh, the YRC settings, 
you got two options. Uh, I believe it's only two options. I got it on the less intrusive one, uh, but this bike still has quite a bit of engine braking on it. Uh, it's not horrible, but I could do with a little less for most street riding. You know, you don't really need it. It's hard to slow down and make an adjustment because it instantly starts slowing down. But when you're really pushing it or you're on the track, then it, it can definitely be a lifesaver. So I don't, about it too much. kind of got it. I just recently made an adjustment and I think I got it real close to where it needs to be. Uh, but when these things come from the factory, it's if you're a heavier guy, it's not going to work for sure. Uh, but not a whole lot of tweaking. It's very easy to adjust. And the ride, once you get it set, once you get the, the squat and it's set up, I mean, it just, you, you can feel it, how balanced it is. Man, this thing. It just never gets old. Effortless. Absolutely effortless. for too much fun could have definitely went a little faster through that <clears throat> could have come off the exits a lot harder with no problem at all This 
switch it up in the A mode here at the stop sign, see if I can't get it to uh,